it's that time of the year again where I take you into my real Todoist and share with you how I have it set up. Now, before we get into the details of this setup, let me just briefly explain what my objective with Todoist is. What I want to do is to see on a daily basis a realistic list of things that I need to or should do today. I don't want to see a load of stuff that I know I'm never going to have time to get to do because it just doesn't work that way and that way I find it just becomes an overwhelming list of stuff that I should do but I don't have time to do and it just doesn't work. What I want to do is to do is to give me a focused, realistic view of what needs to be done today. And over the years, that's what I've been working towards and that's what I have accomplished now. So, without any further ado, let me take you into my real Todoist early 2024 so you can see if this gives you any inspiration to set your Todoist up in a similar way. Okay, so what we've got here is my list of things to do today. Now, Wednesday, which is the day I'm recording, is an audio-visual day for me, and therefore I have all my tasks ready for audio-visual. I can decide, for example, this one here, I pretty much decided already that I'm not going to do today. So what I would automatically do, because I know Wednesday is my audio-visual day, I'm going to switch that over to the 22nd already because I already know when I'm going to do that or when I would likely to be able to do that. So going down further, we've got my project work here, which I've got to do. Now, the way that I work with projects, and you'll probably see this already in my projects area, that I'm using this week, next week, this month, next month. Now, this is what's called the time sector system. You can learn more about that. I'll drop a note about it in the notes below. Now what this basically does is means I don't have to worry about my projects because they are managed in my notes, which I will show you in a second. What I've got here is all I need to know is when am I going to do a task? And what I will show you is we come back to my inbox here. I've got this Ask Mike about podcasting. That's something I need to do this week. Uh, down here though is I set my Samsung card up with my SkyPass account, which is Korean Air's uh, loyalty program. That's not something I need to do this week, so I'm just going to drop that into next week. My whole purpose really is default as much as I can to next week. Ask my wife to order three bottles of Louis Latour. That's something that needs to be done tomorrow because today is a public holiday. So what I would do here is I'm going to drop that into this week. Due date will be tomorrow. Uh, priority four because I'll probably do it in the evening and labels is I'm just going to put that as an admin task because it's just asking my wife something and that's it job done and as I mentioned ask Mike about podcasting it would be as something as quick as that as well going down if you go into my today you can actually see how my organize my tasks now what I should do is point out that I use labels very, very strategically. So I have labels related to the different type of work I do. So I do a lot of writing. I have projects like most people, audiovisual, such as this video. I've also got client work, communications, planning, admin, and chores. If we go back to my today view, you will see that I have it all organized by my different areas of work. Now the way that I've done that is just by clicking onto the list here and you can group by label. So if you've got your label set up correctly by the category of work that you have, then you can organize or group your task by label, which is brilliant because now, right now, the only thing I need to do is look at this area here, my audio visual area. I don't need to look at my admin or communications because I'm not doing that right now. I am recording video, so this is really the only area I need to be in. Now, this then correlates with my calendar. So I'm gonna bring up my calendar. Now, my calendar is a demo account because I don't want to show you all my client names, but you will see, and I know people are gonna say, oh, you work too hard. No, I don't. Uh, if you look at the green areas, this is where my personal, and blue is my personal life. You know, these are the things that I get on in my personal life. It's only the orange and the purple that is really specific work tasks that I do. 
So every day I've got something at this time that is linked to the, the work that I'm doing. So as you can see, I'm doing this on a Wednesday. I'm showing you next week because this is a demo account. I've got my audio visual time. I also have audio visual time just before dinner simply because what I want to do is I will need to do my editing then when I do it at that time. I've also got time for communications and admin. So if we go back to my list here, you'll see that I've got audio visual, I've got client work, which is related really to admin. I've got my communication and I've got my admin. It's all there and it relates to the work that I'm doing. I always try to keep a gap somewhere in the day, as you can see on my calendar, for those things that I just need to be done. The, the unknowns when I start the day, that's where I would do it. This is kind of the work that I would do. So I've got a bit of project work to do today, which I will do in this block here. But this all relates then to my calendar. So I've got writing time, writing time, and on a Monday and Tuesday, instead of projects or audiovisual, I will have writing tasks. So it all comes up as a, on the day that I'm working. So I, when I'm doing the weekly plan, I know based on my calendar what kind of work I'm going to be doing on what kind of day, and I put everything in here. So I will just remove that now so you can understand why I'm using labels and how the labels match the blocks on my calendar. Now going down to, my, I actually, by the way, the, the upcoming view, I'll just remove the side menu. Um, the upcoming view I've switched to board. I actually quite like it as a board. Today being this day, so obviously this is gonna have more because a lot of my tasks are recurring. So all this is up here. Um, so tomorrow's not looking too bad, uh, Friday's certainly not looking too bad, and Saturday's as I try to keep as quiet as possible. So then we now move into what I call my favourites. This is my workflow for the day. So I will start the day off in my, now my day has already started. I will start the day off with my today's objectives. Now these are the two things, or three sometimes, that absolutely must be done today. I've already done them, which is why this is now blank. Today's focus is then where I switch over, and this includes all the things that really are the most prioritized tasks that need to be done today. So these are going to be the tasks that I'm doing today. And then at the end of the day, I've got tomorrow's focus, which is right here. And this is, this is now showing today and tomorrow. I'll show you the, co the codes of that in a moment. So these are all fixed in here. Going back to today, I should point out, I did mention I was going to show you how I manage my projects. The managing my projects, you'll see here is a project task, work on task fulfill, uh, which is my book project. All I need to do is click on that and that's going to open up that fast, by the way, that was not editing. All the tasks that came from a meeting that we had on the 13th, these are the things that I need to do. They are right here and I can just spend an hour or two just getting those sorted out today and perhaps tomorrow. That's how I manage my project. So essentially what I've got is I put a link to the project note right there, bang, straight there. Now the thing about this is projects have lots of moving parts. You've got emails, you've got probably documents. I mean, I've got documents here like how Ian Fleming wrote uh, Casino Royale because Ian Fleming is my kind of my uh, hero, a writing hero if you like. I've got quotes that I wanted to put into the book. I've got a meeting with a um, with marketing person. I've got a content idea notes. I mean, all of this is accessible from here. It would not work in Todoist. I would not be able to keep all this information in Todoist. Hence the reason why projects I manage from my notes. I can put emails in there. I can put pretty much anything in there, which, because Todoist is a task manager, not a, a task manager and notes app. I like to keep these things separate because if Todoist goes down or Evernote goes down, at least I've got the other one that's going to work because they're not likely to go down at the same time. I envy those people who trust having all their stuff in one place. I just don't have the courage to do that because I'm always worried if it, one of, if it that goes down, everything's broken. So moving back to this, uh, I said I'll give you my filters. Are you ready? Because everybody asks me about these filters every time I do these videos. I have written them in my system over and over and over again. Okay, so the main one here, today's objectives. This is, uh, if we go into edit it, it's today and P1. Got it? Today and P1. Uh, 
Today's focus, this is uh, a blah, 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 today and exclamation mark not, which means not, P4. So not, I don't want to see anything that's unflagged in my focus view, only flagged items. And the tomorrow's focus, <clears throat> I've got two days and not P4. So two days means today and tomorrow because I want to see any tasks that I may not have done today when I come to do my final planning. So there you go. That's the, the query version that you want. If you want to copy those, you can use those pretty much in any of your lineups there, at all, whichever way you want to do it. And then this week is just all the tasks. I've got this organized by date because I like to be able to see where everything's going. And then I've got next week, this month, next month, uh, which basically is all the tasks that may or may need doing. Um, the way that I look at this week is this will all come into play when I do my weekly planning. This month is for tasks that I'm not sure yet when I'm going to do, but they do need to be done this month. Again, when I do the weekly planning, I always go into that folder to see what's coming up. Then I've got next month. This is really uh, things that don't need to be done this month and perhaps may need to be do done the week after. And then I've got long term and on hold and this is all sorts of other stuff that I just need to do. May or This is like someday maybe from the GTD world. And then I've got my recurring areas of focus, which are the things that really are the, is my core work, the work that needs to be done every single day or every single week. And these are just recurring tasks because I've set them up, because they come up on specific days, which also match my time blocks. I don't need to review this very often, so I've separated that out. This is something that has been changed from, my, from last year, where I actually had this in my This Week folder as a separate project, as a sub-project. Now I've just created it project on its own. And I've got my regular routines, which just need to be done either daily, weekly, or monthly. And the only reason why I separate them like this, they don't necessarily have to be separated, but the only reason why I separate them is really because what I want to be able to do is do a quick review every three months to see if they are still relevant. And finally, I've got my planning area. Now, these two down here are secret. They're very personal, so I don't want to share those. But they are pretty much set up this way. And this is my project planner for 2024. I already know that my limit is round about three or four projects a quarter. Now, one of the things I've done is I've got my mother's visit coming to Korea. That's going to be for two weeks, which means for those two weeks, I won't be doing as much work as I normally do. I just back off a little bit. I've also, for 10 days in Q4, I'll be traveling to Ireland, so I know that I need to put that in there. And I'm also planning on running a full marathon in the final quarter of this year. Now, that doesn't mean to say that I will not be doing any projects in Q4, just that I haven't quite yet decided which ones I'm going to do. So here are the ones that I am thinking about in Q3, which will start in July. Uh, sorry, Q... Yeah, Q3 will start in July. These will be the ones that I'm starting to work on there. I've got my book, Your Time, Your Way, coming out in the next two or three weeks. So that is just probably going to take up the next six weeks because we've got about six weeks of this quarter left. Therefore, that's in there. And I do have a summer sale coming up at the end of this month, which I need to start working on and get all the materials ready for. So this, these kind of things are all in here. They're kind of at the end of every quarter or toward the end of every quarter, I'm looking at these things, right, where am I going to fit all these in? Generally, since I started using this project planner, I very rarely turn up late with these projects because I know that my limit is for a quarter. I, I never understand where people put 10 or 20 projects in there, probably already knowing that there's no way they can do that many projects in that time. You've got to get realistic. If you don't keep these realistic, What's going to happen is things are just not going to get done and Todoist won't work for you. When I look at this, I know that this is doable. I will be able to get all of this done today without much trouble. May have to work a little bit later, but that's okay. I've done all my most of my important works already today. And if I don't clear them all, I can reschedule them for another day. I hope that has helped you. If you want to learn more about the time sector system, this video up here will help you. But this is essentially my system setup for early 2024.